<laughs> right, hi everyone. <laughs> Had a bit of a technical hitch there. Right, okay. Let's do this. So we've got Steve Free Trig video uh, on compound angle formulas. So by this time, you would have had quite a lot of formula thrown at you. Uh, we know what sec is, we know what cosec is, cot is, we know that. Um, cosec squared is the same as 1 plus cot squared, and we know that sec squared is the same as 1 plus tan squared. Now we're going to extend this list of formula into what's the most useful formula in the entire C3 trig course, really. Uh, the compound angle, angle formula, also known as the um, addition rule formula. Okay. So, the addition rule formula, <coughs> or the compound angle formula. What are they and where do they come from? Well, there are six of them. <laughs> So the first one is sine A plus B. So what you're saying is that if you had two angles, say A was 30 and B was uh, 15, then the following would apply. This is the same as sine A times cos B plus cos A times sine B. And if we had sine A take B, right, so this is one, this is two, sine take A take B, this would be sine A cos B subtract cos a sine b so notice it's important to notice these things because you do need to you just need to know these like that this has a plus this has a plus okay and sine goes sine cos cos sine so this is a minus this is a minus sine cos cos sine right whereas the cos versions so three cos a plus b is the same as cos a cos b and then the sine switches so minus sine A sine B. And we're going to prove this one in a minute. Okay, so A, we've got plus and a minus, so the signs are different. And for cos, we've got cos cos, sine sine. Okay, so likewise for number four, if we have cos A subtract B, this is going to be the same as cos A cos B plus sine A sine B. Okay, again, different signs, cos cos, sine sine. Right, five and six involve tan. So tan A plus B and tan A minus B. In class, you're going to prove these, okay? So you're going to get tan A plus tan B over one minus tan A tan B. Can't really read that. Tan A tan B. Right, and also tan A minus tan B over 1 plus tan A tan B. So, with tan sign the same on the top, a different sign on the bottom. So, when you've got a minus, you're going to get same sign on the top, different sign on the bottom, right? So, these are your six addition formulae, or compound angle formulae. Uh, where do they come from? Well, we can do this quite quickly, actually, so why not? Well, let's do the first one. So let's do cos... No, actually, let's do number four. That's the easiest one. So cos A minus B, let's prove where that comes from. Uh, and this will be reasonably quick. Okay, so let's imagine we've got a circle like this, okay, with... Uh, and it's a unit circle, so it's got radius one, okay? So this point here, we'll call this P, right? And this point here, we'll call that Q, okay? And we're going to assign angles to these. So this is angle B, and this big angle to the x-axis is angle A, okay? So if I zoom in a bit on that, so there we have P and Q, right? Here's the angle B and the big angle A. Can you see that, if this has radius 1, can you see how we can write the coordinates of P? So if we constructed this as a right-angled triangle, yeah? So the x axis, the x-coordinate of P, can you see if that, if cos angle A, so A, cos A is adjacent over hypotenuse, which was 1, so therefore the x is just cos A, 
Likewise, if we had the y, we'd go sine a was y over the hypotenuse. So y is going to be 1 times sine a, so sine a. So you can see here we've got cos a and we've got sine a. And exactly the same is going to happen for q. So q is here, isn't it? We've got our angle b. So we're going to get the same thing, cos b and sine b. All right. So there we have it. We're nearly there. What we're trying to do then is prove number four. So there's a pretty cool way of doing this. Let's start first by looking at this distance p to q. Right, this straight line p to q. Okay. Now, p to q, as a distance formula from c1, we know is the difference in the x coordinates squared plus the difference in the y coordinates. Whoops. Squared. Sine b squared. Okay. So, can you see that if we squared both sides, we get that distance p q squared, right? is the same as, so this square root's gone, and now I'm just going to multiply out these brackets. So that's cos squared a plus cos squared b minus 2 cos a cos b. Yeah? And multiply out these brackets here. So that's going to be, if I rub these out, So that's going to be plus sine squared a plus sine squared b minus 2 sine a sine b. All right. Hmm. Looks pretty complicated. But maybe we can see something here. Maybe we can see a cos squared a plus a sine squared a. Well, that's 1, isn't it? And cos squared b plus sine squared b. Well, that's 1 as well. So that's 1 plus 1. And we're still left with our minus 2 cos A and our minus 2 sine A, sine B. Okay, so the 1 plus 1 is obviously 2. And can you see here that we've got a minus 2 in both? So we could factorize. Hopefully you're screaming out into the mic because you're so passionate <laughs> about this proof. Um, that that minus 2 can factor. So if we plus in here like that, do you see? So I've taken the factor of minus 2 out of here and of minus 2 out of here. And that's how we've got the cos uh, A cos B plus sine A sine B. So there's one expression for the distance PQ all squared, okay? Now there's another expression as well. There's another way of doing this, finding that distance PQ. Can we see that we've got a big triangle here? Big triangle here with an angle in that sector. So there's our big triangle. That angle there, well if the big one's A and the little one's B, this angle must be A minus B. Hey, hey, hey. A minus B. We can see the connection hopefully. So let's go for it. We know the length of the triangle is 1. So cosine rule, PQ squared is the same as 1 squared plus 1 squared minus 2 lots of 1, 1 cos the angle a minus b. So this is 1 plus 1, 2, 2, cos a minus b. Well, hopefully we can see it. pq all squared is the same as 2 minus 2 cos a minus b, and pq squared is the same as 2 minus 2, all of that stuff. So if we equate them, if we compare, the 2 is the same. The minus 2 is the same. So therefore, the cos A minus B and the cos A cos B plus sine A sine B must be the same. Okay? There's one proof as to where this comes from. And the rest can follow. The rest can follow. But hopefully, that's kind of satisfied that. So, I want you to take the video now and write those again in the slide where it says 1, 2, 3, 4. 5, 6. Okay, so this slide here. So I want you to write in sine A plus B, sine A minus B, and try and do this this time from memory, okay? So remember, sine goes sine cos cos sine, and the 
sine is the same, so the pluses stay the same and the minuses stay the same. Cos goes cos cos, sine sine, and the sines are different, right? And tan A plus B and tan A minus B, the sines on the top are the same as what's in the bracket, okay? And different on the bottom. So can you fill that out now, right? So pause the video and do that. <coughs> right. Where are these things useful? Ah, well, it says without a calculator, these are just some things we can do with it. Find the value of cos pi by 8, cos pi by 8, minus sine pi by 8, sine pi by 8. If someone gave you that, you'd just be like, no idea, no way. But if you know that cos A plus B is the same as cos A cos B subtract sine A sine B, then actually this makes a lot of sense because you can see, can't you, that here A must be pi by 8 and B must be pi by 8 and A is pi by 8 and B is pi by 8. So I can go straight into this formula because I don't know what cos pi by 8 is but maybe I know what cos if A is pi by 8 and B is pi by 8 that's the same as cos 2 pi by 8, so pi by 4. And from our special triangles, which I know has been in our assignment, special triangles, we know 45 degrees, which is the same as pi by 4, root 2, 1, 1, 45, right angle. I know that cos of 45, or pi by 4, is opposite over adjacent. So... Oops, sorry, that's tan, isn't it? Ooh. I know that it's adjacent over hypotenuse. So this must be 1 over root 2. So this whole big expression is just being condensed down to 1 over root 2 and box that. Okay, now we've got solve cos 3x cos x minus sine x sine 3x equals a half. Again, there's no way we could even touch this as a trig solve. But actually, yes, we can if we know the addition formula, right? We know that if we've got something in the form of cos cos sine sine depending on the sign in the middle this thing can be de condensed down into our addition formula so cos 3x cos x minus sine x sine 3x that must be a that must be b so therefore i've got cos a plus b because the sign was minus in the middle so 3x plus x is the same as a half so now I'm just literally solving cos 4x is a half. So normal stuff, let's say our domain was between minus pi and pi. We would have to change it to 4x, 4 pi, and minus 4 pi. And go as normal. So 4x is cos to the minus 1 of a half, etc, etc, etc. Okay, you know how to solve that now. Right, prove that cos 90 minus x is always equal to sine x. Ah, I know you weren't there, but the famous C3 exam in like 2014 or something screwed everyone over because the people who didn't know this formula were just like, you just buy, get out of the room. Couldn't even answer the, the, the problem, okay? You have to know right okay not sure why that's on there thank you very much um you have to know uh <laughs> that's very real you have to know this identity okay and this is useful actually because this tells me cos 90 minus x equals sine x so if x was 50 degrees yeah it's saying that sine 50 is the same as cos 40 do you see or sine 120 is the same as cos of minus 30, right? It's very useful, um, a really handy formula. And it makes sense as well because we know that cos is a translation of sine by 90 degrees, okay? Right, so to prove that using this, whoa, how do we do that? So cos 90 minus x, to me, I instantly am thinking of our cos a minus b formula. So we know that's cos a cos b 
plus sine A sine B. So if I start from the left-hand side, quote the left-hand side, and now start expanding it. So that's cos 90, cos X, there's my cos A, cos B, plus sine 90, sine of X. And cos 90, as we know, is 0. And cos X, therefore, disappears. Sine 90 is 1, so we end up with sine X which is our right-hand side, something pretentious, okay, as required. Let's finish that off then. Prove that sine squared plus cos squared is 1. Hmm, again, how do we do that? How do we do that? Well, I think this might be a left-hand side problem, and at first it looks a bit... Uh, but can we see that sine squared is the same as sine x times sine x, isn't it? Plus cos x times cos x. And this looks exactly like if we put the cos x's first, right? This looks just like our addition formula again. Cos cos, sine sine with a plus. So this is the same as cos x take away x, because the sine here is a plus. We need a minus here. A must be x and B must be x. A and B. Cos x take away x is cos of 0, and cos of 0 is 1, and therefore right-hand side something pretentious. Okay? Wicked, that's the end of that one. Thanks very much. Mm -hmm.